Oh, sorry, guys. Drew, you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> that's it now. There's about a five second delay, I think. That's what it is. It's because it's mixing oh. us up. Yeah. Welcome in, everybody. There's a few of you here now. Let's see who's all here. Tonight we are streaming about paranormal, guys. We are streaming about a few of the things in paranormal that maybe isn't so nice and not of the human forum. So we are joined tonight by my beautiful sister Sherry, who is PWI Spiritual Investigations. We're also joined by Mystical Love and Light, who is our sister Rochelle. So everybody who's in the chat, welcome in. Remember and subscribe to each other. You are all blue, I do believe. So make sure you are subscribing to each other and to Mystical Love and Light and to Sherry. So welcome in everybody. I'll let the sisters say hello as well. On you go, ladies. Hello, angels. Hello, everybody. Drew, I put in there Yeah, we're meant to have Curtis up tonight, guys. I have sent him the link. He was active an hour ago in Messenger, so he's maybe popped in to see if the link was there yet. But I've sent him it anyway, so he's welcome to come up if he does come in. So let's say hello to everybody, sisters. Who have we got here just now? we got We've Kim. Got Cam. Welcome in, Cam. Perry. Welcome in, Kerry Sam. Scott, Bud Files. Mm -hmm. Welcome in, Amora as well. Welcome in. Amora. Welcome in, Scott. If I disappear from the screen real quick, it's because the dogs are barking. I'm going to check it out. Y'all know why? Yeah, Just we know them. why. And all of Sister Drew's um, channels. Yeah, welcome in, everybody. We are going out tonight on Facebook on Mandrina Brown channel. And we are going out on Twitch as well, guys, just to see if we can get an interest on Twitch. Well, I do get a few people on Twitch that do watch, so I'm just trying to fill out that app just now to see if it's something that we can maybe take further for the some of the witchy stuff. I but tonight, guys, we are going to talk about paranormal. A lot of you do remember Mike the Naked Bigfoot, who was all of our friends, our comrade, our friends, our protector now he's in the spirit world he did pass away last october i do believe it was in halloween so not last october sorry the year before so we all miss him yes. and, I, and i have got an interview out there with mike and i do believe sister sherry has as well oh, and yeah. there's a lot of live streams where we've been in together on the panels and different things so mike's purpose in going to youtube guys was because he wanted to let you understand, Mike knew he was going to pass away, so he always wanted to write a book and put all his experiences into a book and publish it, of course. But because he knew he wasn't going to be here that long, he wanted a platform to put a lot of his stories out on. So he took to YouTube and started sharing a lot of his experiences on there. And he was a great person to sit in life to well, listen to live. He had a lot of stories to tell, but he tried to stick to the one story he was telling you. So he would say he would have this drinking game, and he would say to you, if he was going off track to maybe tell a different story, he would say that's a story for another time, and you were to take a drink. So it was really interesting being on a live stream with Mike. But his purpose of being there was to tell his story about all the different things that he did because what he was he was a voodoo a voodoo priest and a hood on i do believe the word is a hood on yeah. so he was and he was well well respected in new orleans and different places where he did learn but a lot of his um people that he looked up to and learned from had passed away and things so he wanted to share some of that knowledge that they had also taught him so I, ha I have started documenting a lot of the entities, the experiences and things that Mike had. I've started to write them all down, guys. And I came across an interesting one that sparked this live stream tonight. It was the one about the shadow people. Because we all assume that shadow people are humans or that they're maybe <clears throat> like an echo of the past and different things. So 
I'm going to tell a story about the shadow people that Mike told on his channel. And Mike's channel is linked below, guys, for you all to go and check out after this stream because he told amazing stories that were all true. What he would do is, because he was a voodoo priest, he would exchange some of his oils, some of his hair bags for knowledge and some of the haulers and things in uh, Tennessee where people are very quiet about all the old ways. Also in the Appalachian Mountains and things, he went deep, deep in there because he knew everybody, that's where he was from, I do believe, and he would get to know all the witchy stuff. and. So that's, he was a very interesting man. So a lot of the stories that he did get knowledge from swapping his wares with were really, really true stories because people didn't really want to ever tell them. So Mike had a way of tell, talking these people into telling their stories. <laughs> Welcome in, Dave. It's nice to see you here, Dave's on Facebook. Let's put up his Hello, Dave. Dave Welcome. Welcome, Dave. Welcome in, Dave. And um, what you're saying, I've experienced the elemental world and the spirit world at a very physical way all my life and still do. And I'm 65. Interesting. So Mike had great stories, guys. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to tell the one about the shadow man that he had an experience with. So a lot of this stuff that Mike tells us, um, he'll tell you a lot of the the things out there about the shadow people who are the human ones and maybe the shadow people that's maybe aliens and things. But this was an experience that Mike had himself with a shadow entity. And it wasn't human. And he had been warned about this. So I'm going to read it from my notes, guys, and I hope that you understand it from my notes. It'll only take a couple of minutes to read out. So let's read out what he's got. So he did call this entity the Shade. So it wasn't a shadow figure as such. This shadow figure would take the human form to um, to be a relatable to people. So when Mike, the person that Mike learned from, when he passed away, Mike was the one that was chosen to sit vigil at his graveside for three nights and three days. And the reason that they do that in the voodoo world is so that nothing can come along and steal their soul. Also, so that if that spirit, that is, so that if that man who's in that grave gets confused, maybe he'll come out of his grave and get confused, and he'll need reminding that he's passed away. So it's for things like that to protect his spirit. Mike had took on that job of making sure that his spirit stayed in his grave, made sure that he was to go wherever it wanted to go. So Mike had set up a kind of vigil around his grave for three days and three nights, and it was fully candles. He had candles all around it and had himself a nice little setup. So he had people coming and checking on them from their, their voodoo kind of we're called a clan so let's say their voodoo clan right so from their voodoo clan just to check that he was okay over the three days and that he didn't need anything and that type of thing so on the first night guys mike had came across this shade so let me read my notes to you what i said right the shadow people they don't belong to one thing. They are many entities. A lot of misconception behind shadow people. It can be something more specific and you don't treat all them the same way. Some do what want to scare you, but other shadow beings may not. So this is, this is with my notes from that live stream that Mike had done. Shade. Once, once, once a, not a human spirit, right? One human shadow people. Once human shadow people can be friendly, so can be called shade. As it can be a memory of life, a once human life soul, their human souls move on. But the energy was that strong that it leaves a shade. It's a part of that person's soul. If they were friendly, the memory of the life that was is friendly. But if they were negative, the shade will also be negative. They're not highly intelligent, but can speak words. They also make things disappear. So this, 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 story about that. this is the ones about the owl that I'm going to tell you about the owl, which is the one I'm talking about. So the negative, they're not highly intelligent, but they can speak words. They also make things disappear and reappear. Because they hover their hand over the object and it disappears. 
He interacts some with humans. He can't rid a face of a shade. It stays there as if it's a shift of a memory, a shadow of their memory. He can pull their energy together to form the silhouette. He can man manifest a hat or eyes, but not much more. He also can manifest the shade to look like an animal or fade into the shadow of something on a wall. He thinks they're alive who knock things over and get angry when they can't interact like a small child taking a tantrum. Christina from Australia had one of these in her home. Right, now this one is the non-human shadow, right, people? They can follow people and attach to you. They are human and alien to us, and humans are there as multi-dimensional when our two worlds collide. A point in our dimension that so happens to be overlapping another dimension. So they're from a portal, so therefore a portal opens. So these can be hyper-dimensional beings and harass, follow people. They're more likely to be seeking our energy as that's what they are. They present themselves as humanoid as they are reflections of us. I believe not Mike that is a yin yang on a being of spirit. They view us as inferior to them. We're toys to them. We're, neither, we're their entertainment. They neither care about us or love us. They are there to play with us. You can't make them go away because they are mislabeled as ghosts, but they're aliens to us in our universe. The ones that come at night and interact with people such as they feel messed with and observed could be the alien ones. Right, this is the one I'm talking about, the lemma. This is the one about the shadow that Mike came across. The lemma shadow creatures that live in all semi- Pardon? It's when you're saying certain things, you're cutting in and out like something's trying to disrupt what you're saying. Carrie says it's muffled. Yeah, like muffled these sounds and even weird noises hey, as well. Thank you, Kyle. Interesting. Hey, Kyle. Wow. Right, I'll read this one right and, and hopefully when it replays, it maybe sort itself okay. out because sometimes StreamYard does that. Drew, but that's right interesting, there. isn't it? Drew, right there. Yeah. Drew, when you're facing us, it's clear. When you're looking away, it's muffled. Yeah. Well, Right, I'll pull the mic down a bit, right? Right, let me do that. Maybe I'm not on the mic. Let me see if I'm I thought I heard that Amora says, so I thought I did hear a scratching sound when she was talking at one point. That's why I would look like yeah. yeah. Let me just see if I'm maybe not on the audio of the mic. It's maybe the audio of the camera. Try it again and, and just like can... face this way. Yeah, see well, if it's right, possible. Right. She has, no, she be, it's on the mic, hey, that's Harry. weird. Poppins. Welcome in, everybody. I do apologise. This is the one I wanted to tell you anyway, was the one about the lemma. I just got them all mixed up there. Sorry about that, guys. This is the one that Mike had the experience with in the cemetery. And Mike I believed that these actually um, linger in all cemeteries. So this will be interesting, guys, to see this. I hope you can understand my notes okay. I'll try and make sure that you're hearing me, right? So the lemma shadow. Them are shadow creatures that live in all cemeteries. They hide in the shadows of the trees, the tombstones. They live in all cemeteries and are there because they are born there. They hunt there. They feed off tragedy, suffering, death and sadness. Mike Macumba told him that have no shape until you give them shape. Mike's vigil to Papa Thomas. That was who he was laying vigil for for three days. Paranormal PhD. He heard them moving through the grass, scouring and scouring around, and he heard them chat. He took some candles from the grave. This is the first night. He took some candles from the grave to his feet so he could see before they touched him. Talking English but fast, he could hear them. His friends from the bio told them about the lemma. This was when they came to visit the next day. To watch his shadow at night. In night two, it happened again. So he moved closer to the candles and he saw it reach out the darkness like a child's hand, but very long fingers, trying to catch his foot. He heard it say yes, because Mike was froze 
but he kicked the dirt up and it poofed away as if into smoke. He pulled his feet up and all the noises stopped for the night. On the third night, he lit loads more candles and there was more of them turned up. But the shadows of the candles made it worse because there was more shadow. So they had more shadow to reach Mike. The shadow people was reaching up through Mike's shadow as it sent a bolt of cold right up through him because it touched him, it managed to touch him right up through him and almost made his heart stop for a moment. He saw little yellow pinpricks of eyes and had recognised them as the lemma. He saw a little mouth open and smile at him. This was on his leg, but he pushed past, he pushed pushed it out and wasn't sure if it was fear of them. He jumped up when his friends returned the next day because he was knocked out. When it touched him, he kind of knocked himself out. So he didn't know if he'd knocked himself out or the fright of them touching him had knocked him out. So when they people turned up the next day, or he was lying on the grass where his shadow would have been. Uh, on the grass, sorry, where his shadow would have been the night before. The grass was all burnt and it was all sizzled. It looked like the trace of his shadow. His friend said he was touched by the lemma, and on his legs there was a tiny handprint, not like a doll's handprint. He said it took a piece of him that night and brought fear to some, sorry, to him that night, bring fear to someone to bring fear to him and the plague fear on him and the shadow form of him. He showed him the ritual to do to get rid of the lemur from his leg and now Mike has a scar on his leg that he put over a tattoo, but the tattoo was actually, and I'm going to talk about the tattoo, the tattoo was actually part of the ritual to get rid of the lemur because the scar was there where the lemur had touched him he had to actually get a tattoo of a symbol or something, I think it was, so that the lemur couldn't come back to his leg. So I know I was a bit mumbled up there, guys, but you can go over and watch Mike tell the story. He tells it much better than me, of course. But that was interesting, the way that the, the people told him about it. They said that these things lurk in the cemetery, seeking out people's souls. And because of Mike doing the dedication for three nights, it really piqued their interest. So therefore they were trying to get him and they did get him. He had to do a ritual and things on his leg to get the, the leg up, the, the lemur away from him. But in some cultures, they do not speak that word lemur. I, I do believe it's like in the deep Louisiana and things like that. They won't speak about it. See where like the hoodoo, voodoo place the root is. They won't talk about it. It's one of those things that they keep kind of quiet. The only reason Mike got to know the story was he had been sitting in a cafe and I can't really remember what it was he said that he swapped or something or that he'd done and he managed to get the story out of these people sitting there. So it's very, very interesting. But have you guys got any stories or any you want to tell? What do you think of that one? Shadow I, people? I, I thought it was informative on what, yeah, on what you were, were reading. I mean, yeah. me, and, me and Sherry both have had experiences with shadow figures, shadow beings. There's so many names, ghost spirits, you know. So it's, but it's uh, interesting that you always think that, well, I tend to always think they're human. I always tend to think it's like a human spirit, I, maybe just I've try some, to guys. I've seen some shadow figures that I would swear they're like aliens, like yeah. alien aliens. And I, got, yeah, I, I think that was picture. great to talk about as well, yeah. Yeah, I, I took a picture of one. I think I mentioned it on another video. And uh, you could actually see the whole entire figure of the alien. And I've got it somewhere on my computer, but it's buried in thousands of pictures. <laughs> and the I've never really look for it. But yeah, yeah, I took that. Oh, yeah, uh, here, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Some, some extraterrestrials were showing dark figure. Obviously, um, like for like the shadow people themselves, I think that, like Sister Drew yeah. said, there is a variety of them. Some of them are not negative. Some of them are like um, I've had experiences with positive shadow people, and I've had experiences with negative shadow people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, 
To be honest, I think that the black eyed children kind of fit into that category as well because sometimes even well, though there's, there's many colors, the bodies and the faces, they don't always show that way. Sometimes they yeah. all come in dark, dark masses until they want to show mm -hmm. to you properly. I've had quite a few encounters that way. That's where you rely on your instincts then, isn't it? If you see one, because you're going to instantly know if it's good or bad. So for all the shadow people is under one what one sentence or whatever, one title. Mm -hmm. There's so many different ones to it. So I'm going to start a little uh, book. I'll probably add. <laughs> because I watch the videos and I'm writing as I'm watching them, sometimes I get the text a little bit mixed up. So I'll edit some of that that I've done. But I'm going to do a lot of the other shadow beings, shadow entities that there is, because there's so many. And it just shows that there's some out there that really just... It's just a shadow blob, but it can turn into anything that you expect it to be. So if you think it's a shadow of a spider, for example, it's going to be like a spider. You know, it's just whatever you perceive it to be. So it's, that's a scary yeah. one. One day when I was driving home, I don't know if I'd mentioned this or not. Um, I had, was bringing my, bringing my brother back from, a, I don't know, probably a, a doctor's visit or something, because I, I took him to all his doctors a visit. And I saw a, a child on the side of the road. And for those that's watching that don't know me very well, um, I can see spirits if they want to show themselves to me. And a lot of them manifest and, like, you know, try to get me to look at them and stuff. Well, this was a, this was a little uh, girl, okay? When I say little, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe 9, 10, 11, 12 years old i don't know somewhere in through there she was a young girl but it was a spirit and i started to stop and my brother yelled at me no no it's a black-eyed child no and he's yelling at me as i was slowing down and he said that's a black-eyed child well it scared him to the point that for him he feared it i at that point didn't feel the fear so I didn't want to put my brother in a situation, so I said, okay, so we went on. Now, it's not like you're going to call the cops or something because it's a spirit, obviously. And so we went on. Well, I never did say anything to Lee about it and because there's a lot of spirits I see on the side of the road that I don't tell Lee about. Okay, so... Then one day, Lee was driving home, and when he got home, he come running in. He's like, I tried to call you. I tried to call you. And I said, what? What's going on? And he said, there was a little girl on the side of the road. And I said, yeah, I know. He goes, what do you mean you know? And I said, I've seen her spirit there. And he said, what was she wearing? So I told him what she was wearing, and it was the exact one that he saw. And, but the thing was is when he got approached closer, she disappeared wow she let him see her from a distance but then she you know she disappeared you know once he got closer and uh and i said yeah i said i was with rex one day and and we saw her and rex feared that it was a black eyed child and so we went on because he would you know he got too scared but every wow. now and then we'll look for her in that spot. She kind of shows up every now and then. Now, I don't know why my brother felt that it was, you know, a black. Maybe he saw something I didn't. Of course, I'm driving and still, you know, watching the road and he had like eye contact. And he panicked and said, no, don't stop, don't stop. Just go, 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 go. So that was our experience with, with that situation. See, that's creepy because... I know that we, we, I have seen the hat man, and the hat man's a form of a shadow figure, but that was completely different, I feel. I feel the shadow man's an entity, not a shadow man, if you know what I mean. It's like these shadow beings, let's call them shadow beings, the normal, typical spirit that you'll see around your home or the spirits you'll see duck and dive in a cemetery and things. They look shadow beings. But I do believe that the, the, the hat man is a totally different form. I don't even think you could class him as a shadow being or anything, in my opinion. I think he's more an entity of his own. So yeah. to hear to hear the fact that... you See, that's another thing, though, where you can deep dive then, because 
Mike's saying in that, that video that he says he's live streaming, that he tells the story, that these entities can be anything that you want them to be. So if you're thinking to yourself that this entity could be Shadow Man, for example, it shows you that some of these being some of these manifestations of that energy, whatever that may be, can be anything your nightmare is. So that's why it's so important to know about these energies that's out there, guys, for a lot of us that's spiritual and a lot of us that go into cemeteries in different places. That's the, the, the purpose of doing these tonight is because these little things that maybe start off as a little ball of energy, we think's innocent enough, it could form into something that Mike experienced in, the, in these cemeteries. So be aware, <laughs> is my word to caution. What's some more saying? Think when you walk in, sun you cast a shadow maybe it's just part of us after we move on is people with our out the body or any being that has passed have passed yeah it just depends doesn't it it can be but there is there is negative there are negative ones oh, and yeah. like, um, you'll mm -hmm. find that with a lot of the negative energies they will portray and show in energies that you fear to try and get to you um, like Sister Mystical saying, this the energy that they both see her and uh, Mr. Lee. Obviously, maybe it didn't it didn't stay showing to Mr. Lee because obviously Mr. Lee's not got the abilities like Mystical, where Mystical would have been maybe something that she probably more would have tried to target, which is why the yeah. brother was like, no, 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 don't, just don't stop, stop, like, yeah, keep going, like because mm -hmm. obviously that energy and. You'll find that with a lot of the negative energies, that's what they do. They like they do go after those that have got abilities and stuff like yeah. people that are more open than that. They do try to affect them and try to manipulate them. Like I've had, I've had experiences with uh, shadow people. I've had experiences with black-eyed children. One was at a woman's house that had a kid. The, the, the energy was out on her on her front yard, and it mm -hmm. like it kept showing. And on the night that I turned up, she this this female black eyed child turned up with two other two other black eyed children. See that's not crazy. Yeah. And they don't have to touch you to be able to do anything. They only have to be in your presence and they can affect you. And I've yes. done that even though I did get better. Well, think that's more an alien thing then. No um, no. 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 Black eyed children are not alien, in my Which opinion. I they are <sighs> I, don't, I wouldn't say that they're positive. They're not positive at all. I would say yeah. that they are something from the descending darker side. Like they are yeah. an energy that is sent out to, uh, to, that you, to, to catch you, sort of thing. You know what I mean, so they show as a child because to most of us, we would be accepting to a child, wouldn't we? We would stop at yeah. the side of the road if we see a child standing there. If it was a normal entity energy, their, their proper form, we wouldn't stop. You know what no. I mean? So. Yeah. Can... Scott said, my daughter said she saw one at my dad's house years ago. I didn't see it, but I heard footsteps outside my room. And her room, I know my dad was asleep, so it wasn't him. See, things like that, I do believe, happen quite a lot in houses. I think that that's more the human shadow people in the past, like your ancestors, maybe just checking in on you. And they come in a shadow form, I do believe, just so not to scare you. And maybe they think that they blend into the dark of the night or something as well. Who knows? But I do believe that type of shadow, Scott, it's just your, your family checking in on you or an echo of the past in that house, you know? Do you feel that? Yeah, no, mate, definitely. If it was like a black-eyed child or like a negative shadow person, it would be doing more than just walking around in front of your doorway, believe me. And then you would be noticing mm -hmm. things going on. So, like Sister Drew said, they do. Like your family can show in shadow form. Even normal spirits can show in shadow form when they come. Maybe they're not comfortable to show to you at, straight away. So they come in that form until they feel comfortable. I've had that happen yeah. a lot. Yeah, you know I mean, but like Sister Drew said, you can you can normally feel when something's good and when something's bad. Like you'd get the dread and the really horrible feeling when it's like a negative energy. Mm -hmm. You'll just feel like you shouldn't be near that energy. That energy doesn't feel right. Can always yeah. tell the difference and just yeah, what, I, what I, they give off. I've tried to tell so many people just because you see a shadow and it is dark in form, it doesn't mean it's bad. No. It's just the way that they are showing themselves. Yeah. 
This hey, was our mum as well. Away. It oh, could what? have been your mum. Yeah, it could have. It, it, some of them, if they're hurt, if they've been hurt in a car accident or something, they're maybe a little bit deformed. They don't want yeah. you to see that. Yeah. So the shadow is probably to protect you from that sight is and things as well. Uh, I'm always saying I know we all contain both yin and yang, positive, negative. Like when we were alive, can can give both by our energy, so we can also after passing. But we need both all to exist. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's another thing as well. I, I think that some of the entities that's Hi, out there. William. Hi, Willie. Hi, Willie. I think some of the entities out there know our fears. And shadow beings, shadow people have got a bad name. That does put the fear of God in you if you don't know the research behind a lot of it. But I think a lot, the majority of them that we see in our field is probably just human spirits masking themselves so we don't see them. But I just want you to be aware of some of the other type of things that's out there that mask as shadows, mm -hmm. especially when we, some of us do go into cemeteries at night. It's good to know that these things are out there. What do you say? She had a heart attack, Scott. Heart attack. I saw her at the hospital after she passed away and said goodbye. Is this your mom you're talking about? Yeah, I think it's his mom. Yeah, we're saying that he lost his mum and that's he see, he lost his mum and he see this energy sh sh shortly after. Positive light. See, yeah, positive light here. Mm -hmm. And um. I love that. Was Kim's one I was trying to do. Kim says, when my dad comes to visit, I know it's him because he casts a shadow. See, yeah, and it's the energy of him as yeah. well. You know, you know what? Right, guys, I'm going to move on to the second story I was going to tell you all tonight, right? And this was a, a, a another non-human energy that Mike had came across. Um, this one is called... It's called the the Owl Witch, and she is called La 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 Chusa. <laughs> she's actually That's from the up. Mexican, yeah. She's from the Mexican kind of folklore stuff. So a lot of people in that region will not speak about her. They will not even discuss it with people. So this is the one I'm telling you that might go off the people in the cafe. So definitely go to Mike's channel and check it out, right? And I'm going to read what my notes are on this, right? That's very, Slightly very big on the Hispanic side. Ouch. Yeah. So yeah, you'll know about Ruby, that. Yeah, Ruby um, don't talk about stuff like that. Yeah, you still know a bit about this, so you can tell me what you think after it, because Mike uh, says that on his story that they won't talk about it. It's one of the, those ones that they even drill into the kids and things not to talk about. So it's definitely going to be a spooky energy, guys, right? So slightly terrified, Mike. It's from the southern Texas, southern Arizona area, right? A more spiritual place, Arizona, Mike felt, and few tribes would be unamused at him telling the story. He also he was on the research of the Chacook Macabre at that time, the human kind he was looking for, known to feed off livestock, so he was asking questions around... He spoke to an old Mexican family about the Chacook Macabre. They were in a diner. She told him to be more concerned about La, La, La Chusa, a Mexican folklore entity like La Rona, who steals your children. She's dressed in all white. He had never heard of La La Chusa before, but found out it was a little more well-known in the Spanish culture, but they didn't speak of her. She's an old witch, not a typical witch, a shape-shifting creature, a supernatural being. La La Chusa is a cryptid, a owl witch, she appears in three forms. An old Mexican lady with a bright yellow eyes, sharp teeth and walks with an old staff or a cane. Second, an old hybrid owl, sorry, a, some giant owl like an old lady face with an old lady face with a giant head and is overall the size of a horse. Very sharp claws and long white hair. The owl will be white or grey. Three, an owl witch would be giant, the size of a horse, much like the second, and again with a grey 
grey and has a necklace of bones of children and men with bright yellow eyes and screech words to you like between an old devil and an old crone voice. You never want to meet her. She appears at night. If she comes, it's because she wants something from you. She eats drunken men who are violent and abusive to their kids and wife. She'll spot the men and endower them into the woods, sorry, and lure them into the woods to endower them outside their home. She cannot enter their home. She summons them to deal with them. She'll deal with your drunken lover, your drunken partner. She'll appear to him as an as a young woman and lure him out and deal with him. So she'll also appear to children who are misbehaving. She wanders the streets at night asking for little things. And if you give her money, she smiles and moves on. But if she senses that you're disrespecting her, she meets and if she meets a family and you're rude to her she follows you home and takes your kids she appears like an old vulnerable lady at your door but she cannot enter and if she's not she's not there to be nice to you over the course of three nights she terrorizes your family first night she goes around the house looking for windows she can see in and she stands outside screeching and scraping at the windows she tries to locate the kids' bedroom. She claws at the windows of their room to scare them. And if they look out, she scares them and they scream. The second night, she does the same and appears at the glass, tapping at the window. Remember, she can't come in to the house unless you invite her in. No, sorry, she can't come into the house, not even if she's invited. Or your car. But, but she scares you to come out. She leaves candy at the window or the door and she lures them out with a trail of candy and she flies in and sweeps them with her owl body and scoops in and takes them. If they don't go out, she, she gets angry and screeches all night. She has to do it all in three nights and if she fails to lure the kids out the house, she wants she won't ever return. This story is engraved in Mexican and Central American history. I've put down. So that was a bloody scary one, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to say, too, about the lechuza. In the Hispanic culture, parents are very bad about... I'm going to say this in a way, and if there's any Hispanic people, and don't get offended, okay? You're looking at one here. Don't get offended, but I, and I used to babysit a lot of kids. Well, parents have a habit if if they don't have their children mind them instead of making them mind, it's easier right. for for them to say the lechuza is gonna come get you if you don't behave. Right. And so that's carried on through the culture to make them, you know, to make them behave instead of making them sit down. Yep sit still you know stay there and stop jumping stay around in the yard you, know. The <laughs> you know they say yeah, they you know the lechuza is going to get you if you don't behave so that yeah. too in itself is carried on that way in a bad way because i used to hear parents say that to their kids and i say don't tell them don't yeah, tell that's that kid the that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, don't tell him that. Mike tells it much better, guys. You have to go over and watch Mike's channel and listen to him tell it because he tells it much better than I do. I'm just doing it for my notes. <laughs> you need to listen to half his stories. But it really is one of those the, those ones that's scary because there's been so many tales. In Scotland, we've got a tale that um, it's actually, you'll probably go in England and America as well, where it's one of those ones where there's the young lovers up in the woods in the car and there's escapees from the local loony bin. So the they two of them are in the car and they're having a little kiss and a kadoodle and they hear tapping on the roof and the man goes out to find out to see what was going on and up above and they disappears. And then the next thing, the girl sees blood coming down the windows and she goes out and she sees on top of the car roof our boyfriend being endowered by this demon day looking... <laughs> 
East AP from the local Unibin. So that type of yeah. story has been getting about our local woods for we were teenagers, and it just kind of evolves for year on and year on. <laughs> I've not heard it for a long time, right enough, but because we the did Arana. have Birkwoods down the street. Yeah, the boogeyman. <laughs> yeah, when, yeah, because we had Birkwood down the street, we were told that it was Birkwood people that had escaped and they were the nasty people. So when you're a kid and wow. you hear your mum and dad tell you these stories, you believe it because Birkwood's there and you think, oh, you know what I mean? So I, I do believe there wasn't ever anybody escaped and that happened anywhere around here. But I think it's just one of those folklore tales that is there to scare the kids. And it's to scare the teenagers for getting into the woods in their cars to have a little bit of kadoodle, isn't it? <laughs> Harry Poppins yeah, had, had, not, uh, had the kitty catcher. Oh, yeah. yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the energy that Sister Drew just spoke about, that uh, Mike spoke about, I, I know that I've had conversations with my partner about that because my partner is uh, Spanish as well as uh, native. And he would always say about that, like parents would tell their kids, if you didn't go to bed or you didn't behave and stuff, that... The, that this energy would come and get them and yeah exactly and even like if they're playing outside at a certain time and they're trying to get them in and they're not coming in they'd say if you don't come in then a tooth is gonna get you and yes, then the kids would run in fear them. because you know what i mean right <laughs> yeah but they say yeah. the boogeyman the boogeyman's gonna get you yeah boogeyman yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. See, my mum my mum and my nan and that used to say about that like used to say, if you don't go to bed and you don't behave, the boogeyman comes from underneath yeah. your bed or from your cupboard and grabs yeah. you, and it's like, well, oh. <laughs> that's why a lot Not of people don't when like you to see sleep spirit in as well. You know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> you never sleep when they tell you that. <laughs> no. That's why people yeah, learn the when they do their good. kids. They grow up, they can't sleep with their leg hanging off the bed or their arm yeah. hanging off the bed because they're afraid something's going to grab them from exactly. from underneath. Because that's the way you they think about it. Up. If like, you guys, if you have got the gift and you maybe get scared as a kid in these stories, you know that these entities are real. So you will get scared even more thinking, wait a minute, is my mum put this under my bed? <laughs> you know? yeah. But yeah, that's what <laughs> I was just saying. Like, when you've got abilities, it's really hard when they say things like that because you see things already and you know that there's <laughs> things like that there already. So you're like, I'm a... Like, I used to always go in my bedroom because, like, if, like, the kids were naughty and stuff and my mum would go on about the boogeyman or, like, like you're saying, the, uh, the the kiddie catcher and stuff, I would always go in my bedroom and look under my bed to make sure there's nothing under there. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, like, most kids wouldn't even have... Most, most kids would not even look under the bed. They would be oh, so did. terrified. They jump from as far back from the bed that they can and jump. And grab the covers Straight in the, the air and roll over <laughs> and cover themselves up. All, I used to lift move. the quilt up and go, I'm a good kid, I'm going to bed, I'm, don't take me, I'm all right, I'm not doing nothing, I'm just making sure you're not there, I'm going to bed. Like... <laughs> My brother told me as a kid there is a guy in the woods with a chainsaw. Yes, yeah, see, things like that, Scott, we get told about up here, not really there's, any entity. There's things. actually it's all an empty. <laughs> There's actually an inmate in prison for doing that. It was a, called the Chainsaw Massacre in, in Texas. Oh, yeah, that's a film. Yeah. When I worked the prison system, he was in there. Right. See, that's interesting. And the, other wow. inmates would, the other inmates were scared of him. And when they would pass by, they would go like a chainsaw. <laughs> like a chainsaw. <laughs> <stop. laughs> they were walking. They would run off. <laughs> but they're brave doing that going past his cell, isn't it? Like, yeah, definitely. If he gets out, you better hope he doesn't yeah, he get hold yeah. any tools. Yeah, he was he was in the death row prison. You know, I mean, it, there's like so many. Of them in there. But anyway, I'm getting off the subject. But when he said that about the chainsaw, the man in the woods, it remind me of Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. But that's about that. Even the first one, I just think Mike tells a good story, guys. It's just amazing. But it's, it's all these entities that is out there, but that you have to be aware of. And that's why you've got to use prayers, guys, and you've got to take your protection and things. Mm -hmm. And take your guides like Timber, the wolf, and things like that, that I would do believe would be my focus. I tell yeah. Timber to make sure that there's nothing lurking and things. But I'm going to be extra vigil now when I go into cemeteries. 
because if you think about it, you don't know how this thing starts and who it's after. So was it a parent to Mike because he was doing the three day vigil and it piqued their interest? Or was it just because that entity was in that cemetery? You just don't know. So just be aware of the things are out there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're definitely out there. What's Amora saying? Okay, that is mean. Maybe BC, I never got to told things like that. I got H.C. Anderson stories after age three. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to scare you. You know? My mum always told us scary stories on a Friday or a Saturday night. And that's why I like all this stuff. I've, as I've told you, she would always start the story as, It was a dark and stormy night. Three men sat by a fire. Oh, there's so there's another little part to it that makes it even scarier, and I can't remember. I'll need to ask Helen again. What was it? I can't remember, but it used to put the fear of God in me, and I'd be like, oh, "Tell us more, Mum. Tell me more." <laughs> and then be scared to go up the stairs. <laughs> she tried to tell us scary stories so we would go to bed, and then it defeated the purpose because we were all too scared to go up the stairs to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I used to hear a lot of stuff that happens either in the attic or in the basement. <laughs> well, there you go. See, that was the thing. Yeah, Somebody, I, said, I don't know if I told all, a lot of the, the newer people won't know this, but I've probably told you guys on my channel, but in our house when we were younger, that's how the creepy story started. There was a certain day in September that you could hear somebody sh close our front door and slam the front door you would hear somebody run up the stairs and that would be it. Like you wouldn't could find anybody. And my big cousin William had a CB that you weren't allowed to play on. You could hear the police and things on it. So one night we were all sitting in the kitchen on this illegal CB and it happened and we all went up, the CB got chucked in the cupboard and we all went, went around the house to see who had came in and there was nobody there. But we had tracked it down to a certain week in September. I can't remember the date. Maybe Helen will remember it. Um, this is when it would happen. And through time, I keep remember thinking, I'll need to go back in my mum's house that Pacific week and see if it still happens to this day. Maybe even if it's like, say, the week of the 18th or something, stay that couple of days and see if I can document it. Because it would happen all the time. And we, at first, we thought it was maybe, because it was always like the nights that my dad was never in. So my dad was out on a Saturday night, a Friday night, a Saturday night. So it would happen either one of those nights, but once a year. So it makes it one wonder if it was something that was maybe scared the men or whoever, I don't know. But it would be interesting to go document it now I'm a ghost hunter, you know. Hi, Tags. Welcome, man. Hi, Tags. I know it's against what you're saying. I missed a lot of the chat, but cemeteries are very peaceful. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, there definitely. are cemeteries that are not peaceful and have stuff going on in them. Especially if see, they know that you can see them. See, yeah. that's the interesting yeah. thing about Greyfriars, guys. Greyfriars is the most peaceful cemetery you'll ever walk through. Until the darkness falls, and then yeah. that's when everything changes. I kid you not, know, you would have to be there at the dusk, the Greyfriars, to feel the change. It's a nice peaceful place. People, tourists walk around. Everybody walks around. And, and I've done it myself, and I've been there at 3 o'clock in the morning as well. And it is only that change for dusk to dawn that you feel it changed like a knife just suddenly split the atmosphere it is the strange and i've never had that anywhere else and i've been in a lot of cemeteries and a lot of castles and things when it's dusk just turning to you know what i mean turning to dusk and it's only in grey fires that you feel that so some cemeteries are definitely peaceful but they're also definitely a shift you know says i yeah. see them Mm -hmm. Like the cemetery I go to here was my favourite place. Nine times out of ten, it's absolutely beautiful, day and night. You've got no mm -hmm. problem. But just every now and again, when you go there, you'll feel a change in energy, and you you'll see a dark mass that goes across, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Like every now and again, mm -hmm. like everyone says, oh, you don't get negative, you don't get bad in there because it's holy ground. You do. You can get negative and bad still on those grounds, yeah. most definitely. 
See, that's why I think there's a difference now when Mystical informed us all about the gatekeeper. That's why I feel that that's the important part. I feel as if you address the gatekeeper in the cemetery and he grants you to talk to the spirits, then you're going to probably be okay because he's going to keep his spirits at bay that maybe want to harm you and you're also going to keep safe. But if you don't address him, he's going to know not one protect you to let any of the good spirits probably speak to you so you're on your own so that's why i think that's pretty important is to speak to the, the gatekeeper and, and yeah, then that will be said about the gatekeeper a lot, yeah, of think, yeah. a lot of people think the gatekeepers are only in graveyards but there don't have yeah, to yeah. actually be a gate there for the gatekeeper to be looking over yeah. everything Never there's graves essentially yeah because yeah, that's his job, know. isn't it? It's to look after. Much like what Mike was trying to achieve, I do believe, with doing that for his hood on. I think that's what the gatekeeper's purpose is, is to make sure that everybody that kind of passes away stays where they're to be. The ones can pass over. You know, that's what the gatekeeper will be there for, is to kind of keep control of the spirits and make sure that they're not doing anything that's not acceptable. Because I do say there's rules. You know, there's going to be rules in a cemetery when you pass away as well, I don't believe. Oh, yeah. The spirits will still do things that they're not supposed to do. They have to be kept in check. And uh, yeah. like Mystical said, they, they, they don't just resemble to uh, graveyards. They'll be in woodlands. They'll be in any sort of place that there is energies that have passed away. It's just that they are there to keep, yes. keep the peace and to stop anything that shouldn't be coming in from, like, going in that area. And then you've got to, and I feel as if you've got to have respect as well. That's why any time, even if I'm not going out ghost hunting, that I walk by the local cemetery and I always talk to the gatekeeper, I always say, hello, gatekeeper, yeah. I'm sorry I'm not ghost hunting today. Hello, spirits, I will come back and speak to you another time. Thank you for all the times you speak to me and things. And I always say a little thing, whether I'm going to talk to the spirits or not, because it's not fair just to... It'd be like your friend walking past your house and not waving in or something, you know, that's what I feel like. I feel if I walked past the cemetery and I didn't address them, it would be rude. You it's know? Disrespectful. Yeah. So I always I'm always saying if we think about it, actually all of our ancestors out through time from Roman times or real writing take off. They have what us about warned us about a lot of things because it's so maybe daylight. I'm not really sure what you mean by that, though. I think it's just a, I think it's just a, um, the way you've put it, sis. Or the Egyptians also did. Yeah, so respect, we've all got to respect the dead anyway, guys. So if we're all going into cemeteries and things, just be aware that there is things there that take the disrespect really serious, is my point of tonight. And be aware that there is energies out there that's not human, that maybe look human that do want to maybe do us harm or to attach to us or take a little bit of us, you know, like that one we make. So just be aware, is my point of tonight, that there is energy out is there. there. Your intrusion and listen yeah. to how and listen to how you feel. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You have to because they do. Sometimes they will show in human form and that because that's a way of getting to you. So you do have to listen to how you feel. What do you feel like when you're in that area? Does it make you feel like you want to stay there? Does it make you want to feel like you want to run? If it makes yeah. you feel like you want to run or it don't feel right, move. Like, and don't say anything. Some of the older cemeteries, I mean, some of the older cemeteries as well, like it's got the old stately gentlemen in it, much like Greyfriars with Mr. McKenzie, all the older gentlemen, they demanded a certain respect in life. So it makes sense when they pass over that they will demand a certain type of respect in the afterlife. So when you know that it's a, a spirit's grave of 300 years ago and it's in an old medieval church, you know, make sure that you're going that extra mile to be more respectful. Maybe address them as certain things so that you get the respect. Don't go in and expect to be to talk to them like a modern day spirit because I do believe they would probably not speak to you then is my point as well. Kind of just talk to remember who you're talking to in these cemeteries. Make sure you're addressing each spirit with the way that they would demand respect as well. 
think that's important to put out there. Oh, yeah. Because normally nine times out of ten on the graves, you'll see it anyway. You'll either see uh, lady, lord, ma'am, mm -hmm. sir. That's how you. That is how you talk to them. You wouldn't go calling them by their name. You'd go sir, whatever, yeah. ladies, whatever. You know, like, yeah, you do need to respect it. And they are in a different time to us. Like, they wouldn't expect you to talk the way we talk now. They they would expect you to talk the way that they would have been spoken to yeah. at that time, you know. And in life. death, you don't change. How you was in life is how you are in death. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's just that's how it exactly is. correct. Have you ever been in New Orleans, Mystical? Lucky, lucky, lucky. Yes, I have been in New Orleans. Hello. Hey, guys. Been. Hello. Yes, He's coming to last minute. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been in New Orleans? Yes. I so have. what's the energy like there? Is it because I don't believe with the way that Mike puts it across as if it's like a it's really is a, a really like a different energy type of place. Do you feel that mystical? Um, I actually did not feel that because the area that I was in, my stepdad was a merchant marine, and so we were going to go that way because he was in orange and we were going to go that way to see him while he was on the <laughs> ship and so we did stop and we went through some of the shops and stuff like that but i never i never felt that overwhelming energy or negative energy <laughs> none of that that i that i feel now i was i was more worried about since i have no sense of direction and i was the driver i was more worried about getting <laughs> lost there <laughs> i think that's what well, that was more overwhelming than any any spirit i would have picked up you know their yeah. energy <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been interesting to see if you'd been into a cemetery though if you would have picked up any different types of energy because i think yeah. new orleans was one of those have you ever been to new orleans curtis I've never been to New Orleans. I've been to New York City. I've been to, uh, you know, never New Orleans. Right. It just sounds interesting. My brother Scott says, I did to visit a cemetery once months ago, but I said, I'm just hi. visiting, said hi. I felt peaceful. It's near the house, but mad sure I protected myself. Definitely, Scott. I mean, that's all you can do. Well, New, or New Orleans has a lot of haunted areas down there, I know. The graveyard. Yeah, because are... I was telling the story about some of the mythical, well, it was not really mythical creatures that was there. It was a little couple of little stories of Mike the Naked Bigfoot's experience down there. So I was just wondering if any had visited there and felt that kind of more. I never did when I was there. The energy, you know? I wouldn't mind going. Is... Yeah, so would that. Be interesting to see, wouldn't it? To see what it's like. So what have you been up to, Curtis, tonight? I'm good. I'm glad I made it. I'm a little late. I didn't know when you guys started, but I wanted to come on for just for a little bit and talk with you guys. It's been quite a while since we've seen each other, you know, on a live show. So yeah. I missed you guys. We missed you yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah we, we haven't talk. been on too much lately. We just all seem to be having something going on one of one of the other ones. So it's you know, which is and we don't want to come on without the other, so it it's been a while. Yeah. But we're getting back to it. Yeah, we're just kind of, I'm studying a lot just now and we've all got little things going on and it's just trying to co-create, co coexist, no coexist. I can't find my words these days. It's just kind yeah, of... Yeah, the weather's been so hot yeah. here. I don't know about you guys, but the weather's been so hot here. Hot, you can yeah. do too much, you know. I mean, you're talking 110 if you, wow. even at night, you know, really warm. Yes. No. Yes, that's been super, super hot here. I have to take my uh, paranormal thermometer that I use to check the temperature when the temperatures change. I've had to take that out with me every time I go lock up the chickens yeah. and check the temperature in there so I don't lock yeah. them up. You know, I know. Donna, so I we used to lock them up at 8 and then went to 8.30 and then it went to 9 because it just, it's just staying hot. Just like so late. Well, what are you guys Everybody's been up to? You know, I know Sherry's been doing her garden. You know, you guys. Yeah. I know you've been busy, Drew. Melody yeah. and I have been doing, the, you know, a lot of uh, investigations. We got some new ones coming up. Made it, in fact, Mel's going live tonight, you guys. She's got, oh, finally God. got her, yeah, she finally got her 50 subscribers. So she's got a, her stream yard oh. going. 
right. So she's going to be getting rolling with that. I'm glad for her. If I'm still know, up, okay. I'll be watching, okay? It is midnight here just now, but if I'm still up, I will watch and give her the sport for definitely, guys. In Florida, it's 105, Scott. That's crazy as well. Wow. I would yeah, melt. So I've been watching you guys, you know, so I haven't, you know, went on live with you, but I've been watching. I've been watching the, now, Sherry, the other night I was watching those here in the garden there. It seemed like to me, I seen things, I don't know if they were lights. I don't think they were bugs because it. No, you know, right no bugs. No. no. I mean, you could see them. It looks like a little, it went so fast, man, you could not catch them in, by your eye, you know. The way I, I can it. tell is there's usually a little light. If you look at them a little bit closer, a bug's just a bug flying around, but if you look at the ones that's fairies, they've got a certain glow to them. And that's how you can yeah. usually tell the difference. They have certain glow movements. To the they have certain yeah. the movements to them also. They move differently. They yeah, give off a very bright light, but a very bold light. They're very bold. light. They're solid. And... Uh, they're very graceful when they move and the way that they go across the screen like a bug would be all over the place a fairy would just change direction like like <laughs> yeah, it's, a it's a different and i see light, them you know? physically with my eyes so i can see that's why you'll see me looking around because i can see them physically going around me that's why i can catch them on the oh, cameras yes. and that's oh. why you're seeing it mm -hmm. i mean so yeah i think that's what happened to me you know i'm used to seeing bugs and stuff you know when i what I'm seeing wasn't what I'm normal to, used to seeing, you know. <laughs> Who was different? And I did you see the one who Primrose? Did you see the one in Primrose on the short? Sherry's got a no, short out. Of the yeah, so yeah, look at that. You want to see a real fairy? Go and look at that. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. see yeah. the wings. You can see the head. You can you see, see a head of wings. I did see that. Color. Color. The wings were almost, uh, you know, you could see the wings, but you can't can't get a good look. It's almost like a, like a hummingbird. The wings you are so wings, when, you look at, when you look at the fey folk, you'll find with the fey folk, like the body itself will be very fluorescent and seen, where the the wings will be lightly, slightly lighter Welcome, because Nikon. of what it is. You know what I mean? But you can't. Yeah. Nice to see you. Yeah. 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 It's to totally different than what I'm used to seeing, you know. Like I said, you're in touch with them right there. I don't know what, what I've you're been, doing. I've been in touch with them since I was five years old. I've seen them since I was five, so they're very connected. Yeah. Yeah, they're, just, uh, they're not seeing them. Yeah, they're showing See, themselves the, to you, Sherry. See, that's the Pardon? thing, isn't it? Because they know you've got a pure heart. That's the same back to spirits. Spirits know you've got a pure heart. So in, I do uh, what I do isn't for myself. I do what I do for them. That is what I am. That's why I was saying yesterday about being the healer. I'm not just a healer to people. I'm a healer to the universe and to nature and to all of the energies that consume in that. Whether you're a person, a creature, whatever you are, you know, to me, everything's important and everything deserves to be okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if you can help yeah. them, help them. Yeah. Definitely. Well, they, they must know. They must feel you. You know what I mean. They must feel that you oh, care yeah, about them. You're not just doing yeah, it. There's a big, know. deep connection with me and the fate, and you will come to understand yeah. how because I'm going to be doing some shows and stuff like that, and um, I'm going to be waking some people up on all of the nonsense you see about them, which is from thousands of years ago when people didn't like witches and wizards, so they would do anything about anything that was different. So exactly. I'm going to put it right. That's why the height. The height. Good. That's good. That's why they I'm going to be watching. I, I need to oh, learn. Because they're negative, things. they're bad, they're going to do this to you. No, they're not. No, they're no. not. Yes, you pee them off, upset them, they'll act like any other person would. Do you know what I mean? But they're not negative. It's because, all. and it's the only negative. reason they do it like that is because they've been betrayed in the past, so they don't take betrayal too good. A lot so of it's the stories. A lot of it's the stories. You've got books. You've got you like you look at all of the stories about the Fae and things like that. It all goes back to Victorian medieval time times where witches, people like that, weren't accepted, were murdered by being burnt or being hanged, and mm. anything that was out of this world and not like you like them was classed as being evil. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's what my mind is too because I what I've read in books and what I'm learning lately. 
you know, is not what's going on. You know what I mean? It's don't different. take notice of books. Don't read everything about books. Books and that do not tell you what they really are about. I have well, physically, I've physically worked with them. I have have done since I was five. Yeah, you know I mean, and well, I have never some, had a negative experience. Books, some books, yeah, some books, depending on what they're about, are are written for the money part. Not yeah. for the actual. And remember, Emda can write a book these part. days. Yeah. Yeah. See, Curtis, but these are books from thousands of years ago. Yeah. Just watch that book. Curtis, but if we watch it on TV, you'll never know it because we're watching the TV. I think it messes it's with your it. mind, your thoughts of them. I, does I wonder, <laughs> you guys? Does the fairies play on that man's? no they don't play on it no they don't to be honest they get very offended by how people look at them and think that they're negative energies they're not they're healers okay they're people they're little people that live right next to us and want this to be accepted was ones? part of this realm was accepted in this realm at one point and now they're not because of silly people in the past writing stuff about them that's not right they've got a place in the woodlands they've got an important yeah. job they help to keep the woods the way they are, with Welcome all the way and things. Welcome oh, in, Zero. On nice to see you here. Is that on Twitch? Yeah, that's Twitch. Sherry, do you think you will get close to one? Really, really close to one? I am already close to them. Right? They land on me. They land on my hands. You see it in videos that I've done up at the Woodland where they were standing on my shoulders and stuff. As a little girl, they used to come and sit on my lap, come and sit on my shoulder. I, I have a very, very close connection with the Faith Folk to the point that they will protect me. I've had it where I got protected from falling out of a tree. They stopped me from falling yeah. from a tree. That's how connected I am with them. So, yeah. That's awesome. Definitely. That is really cool. Yeah. And I'm going to learn you guys about all of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so you get a bit more understanding. Because I think a lot of people have got a lot of fear in them because of what they've read and seen and heard people speak about in the past. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. It's, I'm learning, like I said right now, it's as I'm sitting here. Is what that, that means when Neptunes were, were are the connections of you, the planet, and then this is weird info. I got you, Mentium, Universe, and then a Heart yeah, Neptune. Yeah. Well, to be honest, the Fae Folk, like a lot of other like energies, like the um, elementals and stuff like that, they're all connected to different planets and different places. They all have the specific energies that makes them what they are. Like you've got your different fire, yeah, you've got your different elements of fairies. They would be considered and classed to be as part of different, you know, planets and different things. And what you've got to remember is in the Fey realm, when you go there, even though it's looked at as the realm of the dead, it's not the dead, the realm of the dead as in a spirit realm like we know it. It's another sort yeah. of realm. But yeah. A lot of people say that they're, they're the spirit of the dead or they're the spirit oh, of nice other energies. Well. But to me personally, I see them with flesh. I see them with skin. I don't look at them as being dead. They're not dead the way that we die in that realm. They're different. Yeah, you know I mean, but they have that connection and they have that is everywhere. They're, the, they're part of the elemental spirits of the woods well they are elemental they are part of elemental really, they're, they're yeah. nature energies they're nature spirit that is what they are yeah sherry, do, are. sherry the do they energy. do they have their own towns or their own villages yes they have villages they have houses and things like that not like anything here it's sparkly it's beautiful silvers gold bright colors like just absolutely stunning no no evilness no illness no nothing i, I mean, would love to all... would you like to get see their village go there and see i've it? seen it i've been took by them many times to their realms because i am part of their realm so yeah i've seen it Jeez, that's, i would love to see one cool. a little village Just i've got a little it. village in my garden i know <laughs> <laughs> with them and then they'll let you see it it'll take lots of years you gotta open and be accepted to them and stop being so crit so critical of them don't judge them before you don't don't know them okay don't that's what i'm saying i'm not saying that all books are wrong when you've got the more up-to-date books where people are writing about it now and they're more open to it that's fine when you read them sort of books but don't still don't take the judgment of what that book's saying take the judgment of what you experience and what you see that's what they want you to do you know what i mean 
They don't want you to go by a book or what somebody's told you. You go by what you feel and what you see. Yeah, you know what I mean that that's only fair. And yeah, don't yeah. doubt them. Do you? When I'm you sorry, see them on the screen, don't doubt that it's there. You know, and I'm not just talking to you, Curtis. I'm talking to anybody else that's listening. Okay, so are you connected to Neptune? I'm connected to quite a lot of places, Amora, to be honest. Yeah, probably. That's probably where she's travelling to next. That's probably what they're telling you. <laughs> you see me past one. Neptune, be like... <laughs> You're connected to more than one. That's, that's the that's no. <laughs> I see them in another frequency and they can see us, but we can't unless you hit the thin veil. Definitely, Harry Poppins. I think what they do is they make sure that you are of pure heart. They make sure that you're not going... To, they know things that you don't even know that they know. So they know that if you're trustworthy, they know if you've got a good heart, if you've got ulterior motives for what to see them, mm -hmm. such as maybe go share the footage to the world. You know, things they like that. They don't seek untruthful people. They don't. They don't like people that have judgment. They want people that are going to be open-minded and be accepting to them. Okay, and people that are spiritual. They really do love people that are spiritual and already connected to nature elements and, and things like let, that. They like all that. Okay. If they let yeah, you take the was... picture, they can take it back at any time. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, You've got to be pretty pretty in there with them for them to let you catch them on cameras and stay on it mm. believe me i've done years and years of dedication you know you're a good soul to so that's why they're letting yeah, you because when i first started watching your videos I, a couple nights ago a few nights ago i was watching but my mind was not catching up with what i was seeing or something you know and what I'm people saying? that get excited by them mm. No matter how many yeah. times you've seen them, you still have you seen me? I have got I've seen them since yeah. I was five years old. And when I got that picture yeah, I, that's 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 I was that's going that's nuts. That's I was like, Oh my god, did you say that? I get excited because they do excite me. They're just amazing. Yeah. They are amazing. You can't you can't help. That's how I know when Clara's around, guys, is because there's yeah. usually like a kind of giddy energy in the room. Mm. So you know that the fairy energy's around. And you also feel a take off because you feel the energy kind of rush out. So it's these little things that you pay attention about. And then you can usually tell when they're around. Such as I can tell when Timber's around because I always feel them at my feet. So there's still these type of things you, you get to know. <coughs> Excuse me. Just annoying. <laughs> but you don't are, they from a, are they from this planet or did they come from a... They're planet. part of this planet, but they have their own division. They're like, they are the most closest to our planet, okay? So they're right next to us. So their realm is kind of within our realm, but not, if you get what I'm saying. Like, you would yeah. see them through it's nature. Like different, and you can see dimension. them if you're open, but it would be through your fairy sight. If you've got fairy sight, you will physically be able to see the realms, and you'll be able to see them as well. You know what I mean? I so that's what I have. Yeah, that's, I mean, see, I'm just asking questions okay. that's running through my mind you know what i mean oh, not... flame girl says she's oh, more than likely the they shoes. love shoes and stuff cobblers there's a lot between fairies cobblers shoe cobblers all sorts of things our owls is another thing they've got a really big connection with owls and there's loads of different things welcome in wood wood elf nice to see you from kentucky blessings to you i agree Shelley. i see it me. as a thick one side mirror is it sure. raining yes, in Kentucky? Course. Is it raining in Kentucky? It's pouring down here earlier. Wow. It's getting ready to rain here. But Sherry, one of these guys just said that they think they found one of their shoes. Yeah, yeah they will Probably. find they will hide in little places and they are known to move things like your shoes yeah. and yeah. objects around in your rooms and, and things like that. They are known to do things like that a lot. So it wouldn't surprise oh. me. <laughs> so be yeah. careful when you're putting your shoes on. They might be using it as a bed. Or setting that something <laughs> yeah. that you left behind or something. The one you know? flying in front of the camera it's body. Boring, apparently, in Kentucky. Who yeah, yeah, likes to show herself to people that believe in her? I like to hear out from the front camp. Oh, uh, I know Amora said something about, something about nine planets. 
to be honest, yeah, the nine planets are exactly. often linked to a lot of things, not just to the faith folk. They're, they're linked to the elementals. They're linked to the cholesterol side to do with the um, extra terrestrial. Mm -hmm. I think we're all connected to the to the nine planets, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. It's just that there's certain energies that have yeah, more the past in our world. Yeah, yeah, it's through the rainbows and things. Yeah, you know what I? Think? Very much, I feel like they're part of our the atmosphere or the universe's essence. Like yes, a they spark, are very like much. Sparkle, so. you yeah. know, like the Milky Way, part of the Milky Way, part of the. I feel like they're part of our essence of something. They're little travelers. Okay, yeah. they travel. Even though they can come through dimension, they will use like their ley lines. They they will help to heal things like hey, um, ley lines, anything like that. Anything to do with the universe, they will look after. I mean, that's she awesome. I can feel your house. My sister Drew got really? to feel it full, full hand being in my house. Oh, she, yeah. went to and she went everywhere. My woodland yeah. is really open. That is a fey realm. I'm telling you. And you feel it as soon as you go through the gate. It's like the gate is the portal to that world because as soon as we went through that gate, it all changed. It, much like Grey Friars, you feel that shift in the energy. That's what it was like going through that no, gate. No, not the nine planet. There is a planet called the nine planet and it is behind the sun. All right. need to do research on that. Oh, interesting. The sun. Is this a new behind planet? The sun? Planet? It is all about frequency, yes. Mm -hmm. They very much use a lot of frequency and stuff to be able to do what they're doing. And yeah. music, they love the music. music. dancing, yes. anything like that. Music, dancing is a way to the fairy's heart. The energy, isn't it? They've got yeah. that kind of sparkly little energy. They want like happy, joyful, childlike energy. They're very, very happy. So you'll know when they're pissed off because they won't do that anymore. You'll know because they're normally a very joyful energy, very playful energy. So you'll know when something's not right with them. Exactly, I'm not. <laughs> well, okay. The tenth planet, yeah, the tenth <laughs> planet. I've heard something about a planet behind the sun, but I don't know a lot about it. And to be quite honest, they've never sat there and spoke to me about I a planet behind the research. sun. You know what I mean? But, we'll put that one on the list. We've got so much yeah. to do research-wise. We're actually going to be doing a study group together, the, the clan sisters. We're waiting until the else? winter kind of comes more for that. What else says ever any? Ever seen any Bigfoots? Are they aliens? What's in my see that? opinion, they come through portals. That's why you can't oh, yeah. catch them. Because as far as I'm concerned, they can come through portals. They can come and go. Yeah, that's and, that's and the and next I thing I was going to say, Mr. Three Paul. or four different, yeah. three or four different kind. You have the ones that are that can just poof be gone. You all the way down to the ones that are like. Some people say they're like the um, the ones that people worry about running into, and you know, in the woods and all of this stuff. That's so fun. there's there's like yeah, I think there's like four different, just like people, you know. Yeah, you have, you have a step deal on the intelligence of people. I would say that they're in a di dimensional beings. They they use yeah. energies to come in and out. They don't stay in this realm. They 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 leave. Right. They're in a that's dimensional. Yeah. They're multi-dimensional. You yeah, know, they're caretakers. They move through portals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, move they through they anywhere they want to go. Uh -huh. I yeah, think that's why nobody's captured one because they just they they, they can jump and they the shape shift. Off. There was a they shape shift. There, uh, they turn into animals. For the people that have not that have never heard me say this before, I watched a video once and it was a man that had a camera on his back and he was walking through the woodlands and on the camera he caught a, a man walking past, the Bigfoot stepping out like a portal and then stepping back in. So if that man had been walking through there at that time, he could have been sucked into that portal. But that's what the, the trail camera caught on his back, was the, the Bigfoot stepping in and out of a portal. So maybe that's how um, yeah. aliens are, are are most probably are past lives. Some of like some and some of the alien energies may be so, but not all of them. They are from other places and other dimensions. Yeah, They're not all been human. Some of the aliens have never been human, and have never been us. So mm -hmm. it's really important to 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 remember that some of us here have probably been extraterrestrial and remember things about certain planets and certain species 
it, 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 you know we're not we're not time traveling we're we're going through life the way it's meant to go but i do believe that our dimension isn't quite how people explain it to us to be i do believe that like our place is a place of lesson and a place of finding ourselves and yeah. understanding ourselves spiritually whether that we understand every life we've had there, the there's an is always out there it's just that we don't have the key to a lot of the doorways Flame Girl saying J.M. Berry mm -hmm. wrote, when the first baby laughed for the first time, the laugh broke into a thousand pieces, and that was the beginning of fairies. So that's another perspective. That's quite a There's cute There's a lot one, of perspectives. Yeah. There is a lot of perspectives to how they came here. Yeah. If Siri, Siri, your mind has to be open. You know what I mean? To, well, your that. mind has to be open. You to know do what I mean? things to, like that, to, to, to work with fairies ets bigfoot ghosts spirit. you've got to have an open mind not so necessarily that you see well, anything, you know, but you've got to be open to wanting to see it and then you yeah. will start to have your experiences you know what i mean yeah because they're unbelievable i mean some of this it what it we can't see with the naked eye is something that you it's there but you can't it, really your mind much, can't go it, there you know Oh yeah, in that way, yeah, we can. Do, like as witches, we could time travel. Of course, we can. We can go to the future. We can go to the past. It, it you know, it, of course, oh, we can. Um, but this okay. realm itself is, is not a time traveling thing. This isn't. We're not time traveling here. We're time traveling in other places that are significant. Yes, when you meditate, you know? that's what you're doing as well. You're going to meditation is time traveling. Yeah, meditation yeah. is time traveling. You're going to be a different dimension when you time travel, when you with your, meditate. When you're astral traveling, too, because you can go a lot of places. Astral when you're astral travel. Well, you use all your ley lines, don't you? You use your ley lines, you, you'll you use your, um, your, your port, like portals, yeah. doorways, vortexes. Um, you can go into um, cir um, holes in the sky. You can go into but anything you want to travel. Good problem. Just having the ability and believing Look, in it. You can you use your mind, yourself. you know, you can use your mind to go wherever you want to go like you said uh you know concentrate and you can take your mind anywhere you want to go you know what i'm saying so yeah. i don't know if they can get into our I head think with a lot of people when they hear the word time traveling or doing all that thing they automatically think that their yeah. whole body's going to disappear but sometimes it's just it's easy it's just sitting there and thinking about something you might not necessarily go to the full place but you'll start to see things this is you time traveling it's your mind learning to open to doing that well you've got to remember if you've been somebody that's been closed for so long and you've not had that experience when you start to do that your mind's got to become used to doing that you've got to train it to do that because it's been stopped you know what i mean so you've got to train yeah. yourself to do that yes yeah, yeah, you get it. I know what you're saying. Have you ever laid in bed and shook off what you thought was a fly? Oh, like, have we ever felt things on us that, well, yeah. And to be honest, with the faith folk, you'll find a lot of that. You'll get tingles or weird feelings to your skin. Um, like with elementals, you get a really big heat with some of them, or you'll get a really big gush of wind. With the faith, yeah. they give you a small warmth. You're, when the fae are around you, they give they're a small warmth. You might get tingles, you might get little vibrations on you which are signs of them also you know I mean? too though to answer um, and to bring that up you know you feel yes, something yes. you think is a fly a lot of times if a spirit is around you and you feel something on you kind of like a like running into a spider web and you're like oh yeah like that yeah that's that or is, you feel that water. is like, also yeah that's also yeah. A, a spirit that happened yeah. to me in the garden the other night. I was sitting there and it weren't raining, but I could feel water falling on my head. That is another sign of spirit as well. And what you've got to remember, and where a lot of people get really get confused, is a lot of what you experience with the fate is very similar to what you experience with the spirit. So you yeah. do need to have your intentions and know the difference. You know what I mean? Because some of it is very similar, like this like sis mystical said, yeah. like the tingles and stuff to the arm that the fate will give you off is what a spirit can give you as well but the only difference is what i tell the difference is because they give off a warmth i can feel their playfulness i can feel that they're not a spirit do you know what i mean that they are the fae they're the because i'm open so it'll take a lot of training for you to understand that but yeah. if you're open to it they'll learn you to do that you'll learn about their techniques the way and you'll know it's them 
the difference. You know I what I mean? I can't remember talking about Woody. I think would I think I've seen that one you're talking about where they had the reflection in his sunglasses. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Recording off the reflection off his sunglasses. What was that? Yeah. Yeah, he got a reflection of a Bigfoot in his sunglasses. Yeah. No, I was going to tell I you think that. We are she, told Sherry, after I, Sherry, after trying. I watched your video the other night, it's weird because when I went to sleep, I had this, it was a dream. It wasn't something that I was dreaming, but I something told me to come back and watch one of your videos again. It's weird because I didn't accept what I saw. I, I, I don't know what I was seeing, but... I went to sleep and something's telling me when you have your, your another one of your videos, I gotta watch it because maybe I'll see it's more. Really interesting, yeah. It's not that. See, sometimes when we've looked back, they've not been there, so you have to really come into the live streams because I think a lot of the time they don't let it be recorded. So be wary of that if you do watch some of it back, that you'll probably not see half of what we see in the live. If you're not open and you're not completely like fulfilling to them and that then they're like some people yeah, they'll sure. come in the room and they'll look at stuff and they'll, they'll probably just see a blur or see a light where others are seeing the full body you know what i mean you have got to be open and be accepting to them to be able to properly see but to be quite honest a lot of the shows that i've been doing in that a lot of the evidence that i've got in the videos are still yeah, in the videos still. because they do want to be seen but you do need to be open as you won't see everything you won't because keep coming out the live sorry. streams, guys. Yeah. If he's what they keep going out live better. Live Everything happens yeah. there and then then. And and also make sure that you're coming in to want to believe in it. Don't come in if you're going to say, Oh, I'm not going to believe in this. Come in with an open mind and an open heart and they'll let you see them. Just give it time and make sure that yeah, you're not dismissing that the idea of it before you even Look, come um, in. Would Elf, to be honest, all energies, yeah, um, can cloak and oh, yeah. emit fear if they want to. You know what I mean? Not just Bigfoot, but a lot of energies do that. It's a self-defense protection. Maybe they don't like you in certain areas. You know. Yeah. Well, I've been. I haunt a lot, so I'm in the woods. I was when I was younger. I don't haunt as much now, but like I said, that you can feel certain things in the forest when you're in the forest. There is. I've seen movements, I've seen figures, but they change so much in the woods. Yeah, I so much in the woods. It's just been open to it. Yeah. There is and a multi-dimensional vortexes all around, like the ones in Conyers, Georgia, or Camp Chesterfield in Indiana, just up the road from me. Wow. Okay. On the video last night, me and Sister Kim were in there, yeah, right? And at the end, you see this weird laugh right near my mm -hmm. camera this weird laugh and there was this energy that come right onto the onto the camera sis could see somebody's legs sitting on my camera like swinging well yeah well look at that i've not watched it back. they do exist anybody that's not gone to my channel is oh, definitely go and look at my short that i caught of primrose one of my fairies that was in the graveyard because she followed me there's comment and they'll be able to go i'll, to I'll watch it sherry Sister Sherry will comment, guys, and for anybody that's not seen it, just click our channel link and go and watch our short. We are going off here in the next couple of minutes, guys. I'm just live for an hour and a half. They do exist, yeah. They definitely exist. You just have to have an open mind and do not dismiss the thought of even them existing, and you'll see them, I promise you. I would never have told any. I would never have admitted I seen fairies last year unless I really did see them, guys. It's not something that you want to admit to, you know? So definitely you've got to believe in them. But this must be... Sherry I commented say, way above, so if you just scroll up and click on her name, you should be able to go to her channel. Yeah, let me find it. Oh, no, I haven't done it. Let me... Hang on a minute. I'll just do two X's, and then you can get my, my name yeah, that I haven't wrote. Oh, yeah, well, I did write that. It was way up the page. There you go. That's my channel. And right. She has in the description as well, guys. Everybody's channel's in the description. I will add Curtis's channel as well when we go off, but all the descriptions, eh, the channels are in the description, Mysticals and Sherry's. So check the both out, guys. <laughs> oh, so me. I've got to remind you. Are you going to test this? Okay. 
I'm just saying, just be open-minded. I'm not asking you to believe, guys. I'm just telling you to be open-minded and to realise there's more in this world than what you think, okay? Just be open-minded and you may see something and surprise yourself. Yeah, none of us ever say you have to believe anything we no. say. No. None of us ever say that. No, just keep your mind open. Mm. Keep your mind open. Don't close it off. We're not trying to, right, you guys? We're not trying to convert people into believing in this stuff. No, we're definitely, definitely not trying to fool you. Your experiences. You yeah. have your own mind, your own thoughts, and it's up to you if you want to believe or not. And I say it in all of my videos when I do it. You can choose to believe this if you want. To me, I know it's real because it's my evidence. But if you don't want to follow that, that's fine with me. Yeah. I accept that. You, don't you, know. you, you can't not believe. You see her little legs and everything. You see her little it's legs. Clear as day. If you don't believe that, oh, my God. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> <laughs> and I've actually not had anyone come right? to me and say that was a bad yeah, I'm not saying Sister Sherry's down when I say this. Sister Sherry's not tech savvy enough to know how to do overlays and things, guys. And I'm not bringing her down by saying that. She doesn't know how to do all that fancy stuff. I don't so do all of that not, stuff. I don't yeah. like doing all of that. I just like to be real. What you see is what you get. That's how I am. Fish, That's how I always Sherry be sure, Bob, we are not tech savvy. I don't even think I can do it. There you go. <laughs> the hey, most I can do, me. right, upload, right, film a video, record a video, upload it onto YouTube or Facebook and just put it out there. And the <laughs> most I can do is what put is a big video good? together in, in, a, in a video mm -hmm. um, maker and just put a few words saying what's in it. That's all I can <laughs> do. And I'm happy with that. That's just yeah, how it is. That that's me. I have a video on StreamYard I pre-recorded. I don't even know how to get that off and get it uploaded to you. Oh, I need to show you how to do that, yeah. <laughs> right, guys, on that note, I'm going to end the live tonight. Thank you all for coming in and giving up some of your Saturday to listen to us chatter on. But remember, guys, the point of tonight was to bring awareness to the different things that is in, out there that is non-human and things. So just be aware of the, some of the entities, energies, whatever you want to call them, that is in some cemeteries and things and maybe mask themselves as something else. So that's protection. just a little for tonight. Yes. Do your protection, guys, and always yeah. talk to the gatekeeper just to make, keep yourself safe is my best advice for you. So I will play what he's going to say, Mystical. I was going to say, keep an eye on my channel Start because tomorrow is where I've got to go do that. I'm not going to do the investigation tomorrow in that house. I do have permission right. to put it on. I'm going to do the interview tomorrow. The And then we'll have to go back at a later date because I've got two of my team members that work on Sunday. So I've got to figure out right. Sunday to go back. Keep an eye on the channel. This is going to be a one yeah. that there's poltergeist stuff going on there's uh where an entity is working on them causing havoc causing them to to uh fight with physically fight with each other uh yeah. there was a Crazy murder one. in there there was a murder in there where a uh, husband yeah. killed it's his not good wife. energy then yeah there's a lot going on she's reached out to so many paranormal teams they won't go in so three of us Mystical. will go in tomorrow and just interview each individual that wants to talk you know if they if they can make it interview them and then we'll have to set up when my rest of my team can all you know be together because we need to go in as a team because there's an extremely, coming, extremely powerful entity you know yeah. in there and so we want the whole team in there to get as as many answers that that we can. So keep an eye on the channel. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Remember Mysticals link. It's in the description, guys. Remember and give us a subscribe. Well, remember they've Mystical. Got a good, they've got a good team going to their house this time because Mystical and Mr. Lee and all oh, their yeah. team are really, really they're absolutely amazing. Same with Sister insane. Drew, but obviously yeah. Sister Drew's not in that country. Sister Drew would be going with Sister Mystical. Oh, I would be yeah. there with Bell's on. I would oh, as well. Yeah. yeah. We're like, we'd be uh, we're like, come on, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest. Yeah. Manifest, please. 
Right, okay, everybody, I will let you all go for tonight. Thank you all for coming in. And remember, check out each other. That's the important thing is stay safe, everybody. Love you guys. Blessings from now. Love and I will you, be Sherry. out there. Love you guys. Love you guys. I love you too, Curtis, brother. Right, let everybody say goodbye to you in the chat. And I will see you all soon. Bye. Bye.